Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled. I've always been your host, Lawrence Seiler. On this um, particular edition of Ableton On Air, I would like to thank, um, I would like to uh, thank for the partnership of um, the Society for Professional Journalists and many other people that have partnered with us on this uh, show, including um, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired and the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont. Um, today, we are talking about, uh, uh, in the next show after this, um, which will probably run concurrently, uh, I have been studying, uh, I have been uh, I have been a journalist for 30 years. So, um, and uh, today we are going to talk about the history of Joseph Pulitzer. He was a journalist um, from Hungary, and um, way back when, sometimes prejudice uh, was considered a disability. Uh, you know, the color of your skin, your religion, what you brought to the table, and um, how uh, you know how you made your money, uh, old money, new money, that kind of uh, thing. So sometimes, uh, especially during the Holocaust, which was in the nineteen forties, uh, uh, the um, during the Holocaust, um, Jewish people sometimes had gotten killed um, because of the fact that they um, they were rich according to quote unquote um, you know that kind of uh, issue so um, but you know Jews have been known, Jewish people have been known to study the arts um, you know journalism uh, theater, um, all of that stuff, and they brought a lot to uh, the table. So on today's uh, program, we are doing uh, Joseph Pulitzer, and, Pulitzer, and um, in coming weeks, we're going to do other Jewish people who have brought uh, things to um, arts and humanities um, uh, to the uh, table. So Joseph Pulitzer... Uh, was a journalist who um, was also a, 
he was a politician, but Joseph Pulitzer um, was born April 10th, 1847, and died um, October 29th, 1911. He was a, he was a Hungarian um, American politician and newspaper pu publisher of the St. Louis Post Dispatch and New York World. He also became a leading national figure of the Democratic Party and was elected congressman uh, of New York. By the way, this is coming from Wikipedia, uh, www.wikipedia.org. In, um, in the 1890s, the fierce competition between the world of, of William Randolph Hearst, New York Journal, caused both the to develop techniques in yellow journalism, which also won over readers with the sensationalism of sex, crime, graphic horrors, which um, appealed to reach a million copies a day and open uh, the way to, ma to mass circulation of newspapers that depended on advertising revenue rather than the price of the political party subsidies and um, appealed to readers with multiple forms of news, gossip, entertainment, and advertising. Pulitzer's name, Pulitzer was best known for Pulitzer Prizes established in 1917 as a result of the endowment to Columbia University. The prizes were given annually to recognize the reward, excellence, and American journalism of um, photography, literature, history, poetry, music, and drama. Pulitzer founded the Columbia School of Journalism by his philanthropic uh, bequest and it was opened in 1912. He was, bo <clears throat> he was born Pulitzer Joseph, or, or Joseph Pulitzer, in, uh, in order by Hungarian custom, um, about uh, 200 kilometers southeast of, Budap uh, of, of Budapest, Hungary. Um, but his name was pronounced Pulitzer, um, which was a Hungarian name. Um, in 18... 53, um, Pulitzer's father was rich enough to retire, and he moved his family to uh, Budapest, which uh, he had the children educated by private tutors and was taught French and German. In 1858, um, his father's death, his business went bankrupt, and the family became impoverished. Joseph attempted to enlist in various European armies for work uh, before, Im before immigrating to the United States. During the Civil War, Pulitzer tried to join the military but was rejected by the Australian, uh, by the Austrian army, then tried the French Foreign Legion um, to fight Mexico but was simply rejected also by the British Army. Um, and during the American Civil War in 1864, Pulitzer could not speak English when he arrived in Boston Harbor. In, in 1864, at age 17, his passage having been paid by the Massachusetts military recruiters. Um, learning that the recruiters were pocketing the lion's share of his enlistment bounty, Pulitzer left the Deer Island rec uh, recruiting station and made his way to New York. He was paid $200 to enlist in the Lincoln Ca Cavalry on September 30, 1864. He was a part of Sheridan's Troopers, the 1st New York Cavalry Regiment, Company L, joining the, joining, uh, the regiment in Virginia. 
in November 19, uh, 1864 and fighting the, um, the, the, the Appomattox campaign before being uh, mustered out on June 5th, 1865. Although he spoke German, Hungarian, and French, and French Pulitzer learned English. Until uh, he didn't learn English until after the war, at, as his regiment was composed m mostly of German immigrants. Um, now, uh, getting down here, uh, early journalism and politics. Um, he worked for the Westlake Post Building. Po um, Pulitzer made acquaint acquaintances with, with attorneys with attorneys William Patrick and Charles Philip Johnson and Surgeon Joseph Nash McDowell, um, by him having these uh, friends, he was able to um, work his way work his way to record the railroad land deeds and um, and then go into journalism. And he also prepared for the bar. Uh, Pulitzer displayed his flair for reporting. He would work 16 hours a day from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. and was nicknamed Joey the German or uh, Joey the Jew, that which was kind of bad at the time. He joined the Philosophical, Philosophical Society and frequented a German bookstore which intellectuals hung out. Um, among his new group of friends were Joseph Kepler and Thomas Davison. Um, then he became Missouri representative and politician. Uh, and then um, going down, he also worked for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. On his 13th birthday, Pulitzer's home um, in southern, at the Southern Hotel burnt to the ground, likely destroying most of his belongings, personal belongings, and papers. On December 9, 1878, 1878 Pulitzer bought a moribund, uh, bought the, the bound um, St. Louis Dispatch and merged it with John Dillon's St. Louis Post, forming the St. Louis Post and Dispatch, soon to be remain, soon to, to be renamed the Post Dispatch on December 12th. With his own paper, Pulitzer developed his role as the champion of the common man, um, featuring exposés of hard-hitting populist approach. The paper was considered a leader in the field of sensational journalism. The circulation of the dispatch steadily rose um, to Pulitzer's early tenure and aided by the collapse of the city's other daily uh, English language paper, uh, The Star. At the time of the merger, the Post and the dispatch were combined circulation uh, under 4,000. By the end of 1879, circulation was 4,984, and Pulitzer doubled the size of the paper to eight pages. By the end of, 18, eight of the year 1880, circulation was up by 8,740. 8, Circulation rose dramatically by 12,000 in March of 1881 by 22,300. And in September of 1882, Pulitzer bought two new presses and increased staff pay to the highest in the city. And he also crushed the attempt, he, it, it, though he was also cru uh, crushed on an attempt to unionize. His political activism, uh, his primary focus was, um, at this time, was to, um, to 
at the at, at this time was Bourbon De Democrat William Hyde, publisher of the misleading uh, uh, Missouri Republican. Pulitzer's much smaller paper won a series of political uh, skirmishes over Hyde. First, jo George Vest was elected to the Senate in 1879 with Pulitzer's backing of, Bur of, of Bourbon Samuel Glover. Next, Pulitzer secured an election for the anti-Tilden delegation, including himself in 1880. Democrat, the, the Democrat uh, National Convention was in 1880. Over, uh, over Hyde's objection, though Pulitzer could not convince the Horatio, uh, could not convince Horatio Seymour, uh, his preferred candidate, to run, <clears throat> the de Democrats did not nominate Tilden. In 1880, two men came over physical blows on Olive Street, but separated by a crowd um, even before he was injured. In 1880, Pulitzer made a second run for public office. At this time, uh, the United States representative from Missouri's second district, however, he was unsoundly defeated by the Democratic national uh, nomination heavily uh, on Democratic, Democratic St. Louis by Bourbon Thomas Allen. Uh, the votes were 4,254 to um, 709. Okay. Uh, now, according to the New York World newspaper, in 1883, the Pulitzer family traveled to New York uh, ostensibly to start a European vacation, but actually so that Joseph could <clears throat> make an offer to Jay Gould for ownership of the morning New York world. Gould had acquired the newspaper as a throw-in to the railroad deals and had been losing about $40,000 a year, possibly due to, to stigma, Gould's ownership of Gould's ownership, um, and it was bought. In return for the paper, Gould asked Pulitzer, Pulitzer for a sum, for a sum uh, well over a million, half a million dollars, as well as the retention of the world's staff and building. They agreed to a sale of $346,000, um, with Pulitzer retaining full freedom of the selection of staff. The Pulitzers moved to New York full-time, leasing a home in Gramercy Park. The world immediately gained 6,000 readers for the first two weeks. Pulitzer had more than doubled circulation to 39,000 within three months. Um, so um, there was a rivalry between William Randolph Hearst. In 1895, William Randolph Hearst purchased the rival New York Journal, which at one time had been owned by Pulitzer's brother Albert. Hearst <clears throat> said he was once a great admirer, sir, uh, um, admirer of Pulitzer's World newspaper. The two embarked in a circulation war. The competition between Hearst, particularly the coverage before the Spanish-American War, inked Pulitzer's name with yellow journalism. Pulitzer and Hearst also was um, also the cause of the Newsboys' strike in 1899, a youth-led campaign to change the way Joseph Pulitzer and Randolph Hearst newspapers compensated their child newspaper workers. Um, declining health and resignation. Uh, Pulitzer's health problems. <clears throat> Pulitzer's health problems included blindness, depression, and acute sensitivity. Caused the the rapid 
uh, deterior deterioration. He had uh, withdraw from. He had to withdraw from daily management of the newspaper. He continued to manage the paper from New York from the New York mansion. His winter retreat um, at the Jekyll Island Club um, in Georgia and the summer vacation retreat in Bar Harbor, Maine. Um, after he hired <clears throat> Frank Cobb in 1869 um, as the editor of the New York World, uh, the younger person uh, resisted Pulitzer's attempt to run the office from home. Um, and then Pulitzer had gotten um, sick, uh, you know, due to ailments. Um, the legacy of Pulitzer. In 1892, Pulitzer offered Columbia University President Seth Lowe money to set up the world's first school of journalism. The university initially turned down the money, but in, 18, in 1802, Columbia's new president, Nicholas Murray Butler, uh, was more receptive to the plan of the School of Journalism Prizes, and it, but it would not be until Pulitzer's death this dream would be fulfilled. Pulitzer left the university $2 million in his will in 1912. Um, the school founded the Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism, followed the uh, Missouri School of Journalism, founded at the University of Missouri. Pulitzer's urging both schools to remain among the most prestigious in the world. The Pulitzer Prize. In 1917, Columbia School of Journalism uh, organized the first Pulitzer Prizes in journalism. These awards have been expanded to uh, recognize the achievements in literature, poetry, music, history, and drama. Um, according to Legacy and Honors, the U.S. Post Office has a three-cent stamp commemorating Joseph Pulitzer in 1947 of the 100th anniversary of his birth. The Pulitzer Art Foundation in St. Louis was founded by the family's philanthropy and is named in their honor. In, 18, in 1989, Joseph Pulitzer was induct, inducted into the St. Louis Walk of Fame. He was featured as a character in, Disney, in, in the Disney film Newsies in 1992. Uh, he was played by Robert Duvall, and the Broadway stage production Newsies was adapted in 2011. In 2014, a historical novel, The New Colossus, by, um, by Marshall Goldberg, was published by Division Books. Pulitzer gives the reporter Nellie Bly the assignment of investigating the death of Emma Lazarus. The Hotel Pulitzer in Amsterdam was named after his grandson, Herbert Pulitzer. Mount Pulitzer in Washington was named for him. And then there's also the Joseph Pulitzer House and many others um, that were uh, there. Also, um, for those that want to know, um, there are... Uh, Videos on Pulitzer as well. Uh, let me go to that, and I'll give a book. So, um, PBS has a um, the public broadcasting system. Part of PBS um, has a uh, has a video uh, and also a program uh, based on Pulitzer. And for more information, you can go to www.pbs.org forward slash WNET American Masters. Um, Pulitzer was an, a 
newspaper publisher, entrepreneur, and innovator. He was known as the man behind the Pulitzer Prize. He was a journalist, media mogul, and champion of the free press. Um, the American Masters film can be uh, is called Joseph Pulitzer, The Voice of the People, and it was done on April 2019, uh, and it was directed by Oren uh, uh, Rudasvisky. Uh, and for more information on that, you can go to www.pbs.org forward slash WNET American Masters. Uh, and uh, also, if you would like to find out more about Joseph Pulitzer, um, you can also go to, hold on, let me find it. Okay. Uh, if you want to find out more about Joseph Pulitzer and um, his life, you can go to National Geographic in their publications at uh, www.pulitzercenter.org. Um, um, National Geographic uh, did a uh, something on um, Joseph Pulitzer. You can uh, look at the Pulitzer Center. Now, the Pulitzer Center is um, a center um, dealing with Pulitzer's journalism and life. Um, you can go to www.pulitzercenter.org. That's P-U-L-I-T-Z-E-R center.org forward slash um, publications National Geographic. Uh, so... If you want to find out about his journalism, uh, education, um, grant, there's grants and fellowships, all kinds of stuff here about his life and um, the things that he did and it talks about outreach. So uh, for more information on that, again, you can go to www.pulitzercenter.org forward slash publications. Um, Uh, yeah, so um, the Pulitzer Center has lots of things, um, as you can see by my computer here, um, has lots of uh, opportunities for journalists, student reporting, uh, journalism, anything you want to find out about journalism, you can go to the, pub, uh, to the um, Pulitzer Center. Again, today's uh, episode was um, based on the life of Joseph Pulitzer. Uh, we as journalists must thank these journalists uh, from Pulitzer to Cronkite to many other people who have influenced our lives in the arts, especially in journalism. Um, never stop uh, having careers, never stop being employed despite your disability, and never give up. Again, I'm Lawrence Seiler. Thank you to the Society for Professional Journalism. Uh, thank you for, uh, to the Pulitzer Center, as, as well as many other agencies that have partnered <clears throat> with us um, in, um, in the show, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and many others in Vermont and beyond. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Able Than On Air include Parchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, 
Associated Press Media Editors, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Denonair has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Abel Denonair is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.